Hey there, what's going on? Welcome to the Stripe Connect payment series where I'm gonna show you how you can set up a two-sided marketplace using Stripe Connect. So in this video, we are gonna be going over all of the individual building blocks that we're gonna to need to go through in order to create the functionality that will allow us to accept payments and then automatically pay out our sellers. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna go over is what exactly we are aiming for and what you'll hopefully be able to set up at the end of this tutorial series. The first thing that we want to do is to create a way for our sellers or users or whoever your service providers are to join our Stripe account. That means going through an onboarding process, adding their business details, adding their personal details, and then also connecting their bank account. The next thing that we wanna do is allow users to add products to our account. So in my particular case, what I'm gonna be working on is a digital op shop or secondhand store. And what I wanna allow my sellers to do is to add secondhand clothing items that they wanna sell to my store. Finally, I also want to set up functionality that will allow me to accept payments from customers that want to buy these secondhand clothes. And then when the purchase is made, I also want to be able to automatically pay out my sellers that added that product. Finally, I also want to make sure that we can keep track of all of the different transactions that will then allow us to do things like remove an item from our store once it is sold. Next, let's have a chat about the different tools that you're going to need in order to recreate the functionality that I'm going to be showing you over the upcoming tutorials. First of all, we are going to be using Airtable as our database tool. Now, obviously, if you have a different tool that you like to use to create databases, for example, Notion or Google Sheet or whatever it may be, then you are more than welcome to do so but please keep in mind that the tutorials and the tricks that I'm going to be showing you are all based around Airtable. Next, you are going to need to create a Stripe account. So I recommend before watching the first video actually signing up and going through the entire onboarding process, we will be using the test account to basically create all of the different functionality. So you don't have to worry about using actual credit cards in order to test all of this. But it is important in order for you to get most of out of these upcoming tutorials to make sure that your Stripe account is set up. And then finally, the automation tool that I am going to be using to set up the workflows in question is make.com. Now, the reason why I'm using make is because it's actually not possible to set up this workflow with Zapier. There are certain workarounds that you can use using custom request modules, but, uh, Integrum actually or now make actually have a tool that allows you to make API calls once you've connected your Stripe account and it is definitely going to make the entire process of setting up workflows a lot easier. And then finally, I have a little checklist for us so you know exactly what we're gonna be creating over the course of the next few videos. First of all, we are going to be creating our onboarding process for sellers. We are gonna be setting up a workflow that actually is quite intricate. There are gonna be a lot of moving components in order for us to make this happen. After we have managed to set up a system where we can add sellers to our Stripe account and they can then go through an onboarding process, then what we're gonna do is move on to the stage where we then add products that our sellers want to sell to our Stripe account. When we do that, we are then going to add a price and then from there generate a payment link that can then be connected to one of the seller accounts. And that will allow us to basically automatically pay out a seller as soon as that product is sold. And then finally, we're also gonna be setting up a workflow for tracking all of the transactions inside of Airtable. This is incredibly useful if you want to remove items from your store. And and so if you want, go ahead and create this checklist for yourself, write it on a piece of paper, and those are the different things that we're gonna need to do. And then finally, before we get into it, I want to quickly go over the use case that I'm gonna be going over. Now, you're more than welcome to work on your already existing marketplace to set up this functionality, but if you just wanna practice or start from scratch, I'll allow you to copy the base that I'm gonna be using to create all these workflows. So all you need to do is just simply click into it, and then from here, all you need to do in order to practice on this particular base is just click on copy base. That will then open up your Airtable account and you'll then be able to add it to one of your workspaces. So you can see here, I've got a lot of different workspaces, but let's say I just add it to this workspace here. It will then automatically add my Airtable base to yours. And then you can see it down here and you'll be able to start working on it from in here. You'll be able to change the data. You'll be able to set up your own automation and workflows. You'll be able to add your own products and it won't affect 
create the original database. Okay, so we're about ready to get started with the first tutorial. If along the way you have any questions or you have a unique use case that you need help with, then please let me know in the comment section of each video and I can then go ahead and make a follow-up video or if it just requires a quick little answer, I can actually just leave a comment on your comment. Other than that, I think you can get through all of the tutorials in one sitting. I hope that you enjoy them and I'll see you in the first video.